This video is brought to you by LearnCodeOnline.in. Visit our website or download our apps. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. In this video, we are talking about some of the questions that I don't like to answer. Probably you might have reached me with these questions on my Facebook or email and might haven't got any answer at all. And there is a rock solid ground reason why I don't like to answer these questions. So in this video, I'll be taking up these questions and will tell you why I don't answer them. Of course, don't expect me to answer for these questions. Obviously, I'm not going to answer that. But I'll tell you the reason why I always skip Anything these questions. So let's get started. We want today. Won't be scared of falling down no more. So take me away. Some other place. The number one question if I had to pick up would be this. What should I do after my 12th? BTEC, BCA or BSc, whatever that is. Now, I always, always skip these questions. I have never given any specific answer to this question and let me tell you why I am not giving answer to this question. Now, regardless of whatever I say, I believe the degree, whatever the degree you are choosing, it is in a costly degree. It is going to give you a lot of bank loan and debt about that. So I don't want any, this decision is very important for you. I don't want any YouTuber to just give you this decision and you just take it. No, it should not be like that. Degrees, whatever you are choosing, first of all, you should study about it, read about it, about the curriculums, what you're gonna be studying, at what university you'll be studying, what you'll be able to do after doing that degree. So it should be wholly your decision. And another reason why I don't give answer to this question is I believe that whatever the degree you are be choosing, you have different fantasies about that degree as compared to what happens actually in a degree. You might be thinking after taking this degree, I'll be able to program, write code, I'll have amazing friends who will be absolutely crazy about programming, I'll find amazing teachers there who are gonna teach me all the time. But reality sadly is way more different than what you are thinking. What happens in the college and what you are thinking is completely apart. And for the rest, for your three or four years of your life, it depends on what kind of degree you are choosing, you'll be absolutely hating me if I'll be suggesting you any degree. So that's why I just like to give this decision absolutely to you so that you can determine what degree is best for you. Another question that I get is choosing for the branch. Now I do believe that a lot of people of this channel are enthusiastic about programming and are just completing their school or about to be completed or just have completed their school and they want to choose perfect branch, absolutely perfect branch in their engineering, whether that's computer science, information security, or computer science with some specialization or whatever that is. Again, I don't like to answer this question as well. And there are some reasons as well, because I believe if you're watching this channel, obviously you are tech enthusiastic, you love programming, networking, hacking, and all these stuff. Now, what you'll be studying in your syllabus and the implementation of that in that syllabus is completely different with your fantasies again. So again, I'm not at all a good person to answer this question as well. I myself has done my engineering in electronics and communication. Fruitful? Absolutely for me. But not at all good if you're looking for a computer perspective. It will give you a ground solid math and absolutely fun about. Now, I was lucky that in my university, I had to learn a lot of programming language and I didn't worry about if that language is in my syllabus or not. I was crazy about it. I learned it absolutely and that's all what I did. But again, choose and look for the slavers, look for what are the content you'll be studying and all of that. So again, choosing the branch, I know it's crucial for you, but it should be end of the day. It should be your decision, not from any random YouTuber who's just saying, choose computer science. It should not be like that. You should research on that. It should be your decision. Another question that I get is, should I go for higher studies or job? Now, now this is a very complicated question. This involves a lot of variables depending on what are your family situation, how much monetary benefits you are getting from your family, how much you can afford and what is your end goal about learning things. Now again, I am nobody to answer this question in one line that hey, go for higher studies or hey, go for job. Now, both of these things are meant to make sure that you learn something. You will be learning things via higher studies manner as well. That's a different approach and you'll be learning via job approach as well. It's not like nobody learns at the job. In fact, people do, do learn quite a lot at job as well. Now, higher studies or job, a lot of variables are involved in this and this cannot be answered in a question like, 
this video or maybe a chat on Facebook. This is not, this doesn't happen like that. There are a lot of variables that needs to be computed and then only one can get answer for that. Even if you write a very long email explaining me everything, I don't think I'm a rock solid person to answer this question as whether we should be going for higher studies or job. It's totally your wish and how much you can afford and what is your situation of going into whatever you want to go. So again, I always skip this question that should I go for higher studies or job. Now this one question, although I do have answer for that, but always you might have seen that if you have asked me on this Facebook, I have seen your question and I have unseen it. Kind of I haven't replied. And that is what should I do, MTech or MBA? MTech is a tech degree and MBA is good for uh, business perspective, improving the business and stuff. Now, you know me guys, I'm a tech person. I'm absolutely crazy about programming, new tech, hacking, networking, Linux, whatever that is. So I always have some kind of a, kind of a tendency of leaning towards the MTech. Uh, but again, it's totally your decision and degrees is something that again, I wouldn't be suggesting anything and you should be the one who should look forward where you want to go. Being a tech enthusiastic, it's really common for me to lean towards MTech, but am I right there? Probably not or probably yes. So it should be totally your decision, not from any random YouTuber who is just making videos sitting in front of a camera and saying, hey, go for that degree. No, it, it shouldn't happen like that. If programming languages would be a live person, it would be insulting to them if people answer, ask this question. And this question is scope of X programming language, where X can be replaced by C, C++, Java, Python, Perl, Ruby, .NET, C Sharp, Python, whatever the language you can name it here. Now this is absolutely a wrong question. There is no scope of any programming language and there is absolutely crazy scope of every programming language. It doesn't really matter what kind of language you are learning and you are looking forward for scope because programming language do keep on changing about their scopes and stuff. And obviously, if you'll ask a person who can just write a simple loop in PHP, he is, he's going to say there is no job market in PHP. It's not like that. It's outdated language. Now Node.js is rocking. On the other hand, a person who can do absolutely anything in PHP is going to say PHP is still rocking. You know, I have got three job offers in my email still for PHP and have got like five or ten projects still pending on PHP. It doesn't matter that what kind of scope we are talking about here. Does scope matter? Yes, a little bit, but not that much. The most thing that matter is how much expertise you are having with that language. Of course, expertise doesn't come with buying a book or buying a course. It comes over with the time. Books and these courses are a good way of pushing the limits or just mastering the th things in a short time. But on top of that, you still have to spend a lot of great amount of time with these programming languages. So again, asking scope is completely, totally a bad idea. All programming languages do have scope, whether that's VB.NET or COBOL. There is always a demand of certain people, maybe that industry is using that language. Now, also I would like to say that yes, scope is there a little bit like that. Like some industries are heavy oriented in India. Some languages are much more used in New Zealand or maybe in the United States. So yes, there is a little bit of difference of like that. But again, programming on a whole is a concept. And one person who is expert in PHP takes him no time to switch on to Java or maybe JavaScript. So again, please stop asking this question about scope of programming language. This is absolutely a wrong question and there is not at all any answer for that. Honestly, I can talk a little bit more about on this subject, but I would like to just say here that uh, yes, there are few languages which are trendy one year and there are few languages which are not so trendy one year. And of course, I would, I would recommend all of you that it's like a game of Batman. The more languages you are having in your belt, uh, it's always good. And again, on top of that, there should be a couple of languages on which you have extreme expertise. So always take a couple of languages in your belt, but don't worry too much about the scope. Just keep on moving, keep on building the stuff, and that surely is going to help you. And here comes the final question, which is, can you suggest me the best, the best of the bestest laptop for programming? Now, I cannot do that. Honestly, I cannot. Now, I have compiled a list of uh, best laptops under 50K for programming, and I have given specific reason why I'm selecting these laptops or not. Their blog is there at learncodeonline.in. So search for that, about 50K laptops, Learn Code Online, you'll get that blog. But again, honestly, I cannot recommend you enough about any laptop. 
all the laptops which are having like decent amount of RAM, good graphic card and decent storage is absolutely fine for programming. But again, it depends on what kind of things you want to build. Uh, having a Dell laptop, an amazing best Dell laptop, maybe Alienware cannot build an iPhone app. And on top of that, if you are looking for these high-end computation, all of that, you have to spend time on that. A lot of people ask me also this, that, hey, can I learn programming on my mobile? Yeah, you can, but obviously if you will have good tools, that will make you a better programmer faster, you will be less frustrated, and you will be actually building the stuff. What kind of a programmer is a programmer if he's not having a good, decent laptop? It's expensive, I do get that, I totally agree with you there. But this is a programming thing, this is an investment. You are not learning it to do absolutely for free. You are not gonna be running an NGO for that. You'll be obviously making money after learning programming and doing all these things. So learn to invest because obviously you'll be earning it back. So try to invest something here. And I know a lot of people cannot afford all of that and still are programming enthusiastic. I totally agree with you, but you can work harder and maybe earn money with the side job and anything. That's a totally different subject, but yes, coming back onto the topic, I cannot suggest you a best programming laptop because my experience of Dell, whatever I have, is completely gonna be different of what kind of Dell laptop you are gonna be buying. Same goes with the other brands as well, Asus, HP, all of them are trying to give you best laptop and it all depends the more amount you'll be giving to them, the more hardware you'll be getting and that is gonna be eventually better for programming. And programming can be done on all laptops regarding their operating system. There is no such kind of a basic boundaries here. You can work on Windows, Mac, Linux, pretty much anything. There is no such big deal. But yes, if you want to build specific projects for that, then comes specific limitation. And that is just one. Apple is Apple. If you want to build apps for Apple, you need to have uh, hardware from the Mac or the Apple lineup there. But apart from that, all laptops, whether Dell, HP, Asus, all of them are pretty much same and it all matters about the internals of that and since I'm not getting sponsored by any of one of them uh, I cannot give you the names that hey buy this product or something like that no I'm not gonna do that obviously just choose whatever is your budget and I also know that whatever the laptop you're looking for is totally out of your budget it happens with all of us so just get whatever you can get at the best so that's it for this video. I hope this video has helped you to understand that why there are some times when I don't answer your question on Facebook or maybe on the email as well. So in case you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. In case you are new here, we are tech enthusiastic here. We are programming crazy guys. We love to talk about programming, maybe networking, maybe Linux, maybe a little bit about hacking and stuff. So if you're new here, do hit the subscribe and I'll surely catch you up in the next video.